Merry meet the lovely people, it is Nina, you're watching Fairy Chamber channel. Let's get back into Bardic Mythology and today we are going to talk about the um, invisible spirits in <laughs> Bardic Mythology. Uh, this is a topic you can find pretty much all over the world and also in Finland we have lots of invisible spirits in our mythology and it's very interesting when I did when I've done research on Bardic mythology, the invisible spirits, uh, they are very female oriented. And if you have looked on my previous videos about Bardic mythology, you are aware that we are talking about extremely matriarchal mythological uh, system, which is pretty cool. So when uh, in Latvia and Lithuania, the mythology it is quite matriarchal and some of the most uh, worshipped uh, deities are goddesses. There is Saule, the sun goddess, and then there is the Nina, the earth goddess, Ragana, who is not necessarily that worshipped, but still very important goddess, and Lyamad, the goddess of the fate, and so on. So in Bardic mythology, when it comes to the invisible deities, many of them are female spirits as well. It's very interesting. So, uh, the Bardic mythology itself, uh, it dates back all the way to this time period in Europe when uh, most people worshipped so-called primord primordial mother, the earth mother cult. And that is where these uh, pagan deities in Bardic Toji have widespread. They, you can see them as aspects of this primordial mother and develop, developed to their own entities. I can speak in English. <laughs> anyway, it's very interesting area to research. And there are different kinds of uh, these invisible spirits. There's laumes, which are like, which are spirits of nature. They're usually female, and uh, they work together with the goddess of the destiny, Laima, and you could see them as her group. I could make a comparison to ancient Greece, where nymphs were uh, groups of of Aphrodite or her like, uh, maiden. So laumes could see them as Lima's destiny fulfillers, <laughs> helpers, and very important nature spirits in body mythology. Then there is Gaukai. And Gaukai, they uh, had also a god that whose party they belonged to, and this god was Puskaitis, who was the god of the elder tree or elder bush. So he was one of the earth minor earth deities and the earth goddess in Bardic mythology is Semina and Puskaitis you could see that see him as one part of Semina or Semina's kingdom <laughs> so uh, Kaukai were the um, people of Puskaitis and uh, when he is the god of the bushes and god of the trees Kaukai naturally are the tree and bush spirits and earth spirits since they are connected to mosses and mushrooms and all kind of all kinds of like roots and branches and things intertwining together. So there's lots of this symbolical meaning and Puskait is uh, himself as a god. Sometimes he's described to be the lungs of Jemina and what trees are for the world? Lungs. <laughs> so uh, this whole idea of Kaukai being the, the roots or spirits of the roots uh, and then being people's uh, good luck bringers, it kind of all makes sense uh, but keeping this kind of nature connection alive all the time. It's very interesting. So 
uh, this whole uh, symbolism behind these deities is uh, quite mind blowing when you think about it. So and uh, people created the myths to explain uh, why things happen like they happen in nature, obviously. So Puskatis, Puskatis, he is the lungs of the forest, and uh, Kaukai are his um, connectors between people and nature one of the connectors and it is very interesting when we think about the Baltic mythology and it is said that the uh, worship of this uh, primordial mother that it was the starting point of the Baltic mythology uh, mother called it survived all the way till the 19th century so it has had huge impact on Baltic folklore and mythology and still has. Then we have another group of spirits which is Aitvarai and Aitvarai is a dragon or um, it's also an umbrella term for household spirits. So it was believed that uh, some people they kept dragons as their pets or they were like I don't think they were literal dragons but also invisible spirits but they were seen as dragons and sometimes also as snakes if you are familiar with the Baltic animal mythology snakes was uh, especially worshipped really in Lithuania and Lithuanians were called as the snake people so Aitvaras could have been in the shape of a dragon or a huge snake with a flaming head and it is believed that this idea of Aitvaris and these dragons and snakes it came from meteorites and when people saw meteorites in the skies they thought they were dragons and they thought they were Aitvaris and Aitvaris in the beginning it was also somewhat a good luck bringer but then uh, when Christianity arrived uh, dragons got demonized and Aitvaris became a very bad omen and it was believed that only witches and devil worshippers kept these dragons or these invisible dragon spirits at their homes but in the pagan times people saw them as good luck bringers and also they used to feed them with baked cookie, baked meals and cooked meals and omelettes. <laughs> it's very interesting. And um, it was believed that the first Aitvarai they lived in the skies, probably because of the meteorites or in the woods. And also that uh, the more we come more closer to Christian, Christian times, uh, it was believed that only wicked people kept Aitvarais. And uh, also some people uh, blamed, especially during the more witch, hunts, witch hunt period, that jealous people, they sent their Aitvarai to take other people's uh, grains and barns and uh, destroying their their crops and so on. So people believe that witches would send Aitvarai to destroy um, their enemies. And also, also Aitvarai was connected to Perkunas and Perkuna is the thunder god in Baltic mythology. And this makes sense because Perkuna is a sky god and <laughs> creates thunder and dragon with flaming snake head could be seen as a thunder symbol so Aitvara is also connected to Perkunas. Conclusion for this would be that Aitvara was uh, seen as a prosperity bringer and um, divine creature really coming from the skies and uh, bringing abundance for the people who took care of them. 
So thank you for watching guys. These were some stories from Body Mythology. I will come back to you when I now have more stories to tell. I will see you soon. Take care. It is Nina, you are watching Fairy Chamber channel, continuing my series on Baltic mythology and Baltic folklore. So the Baltic countries are Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia. And today I'm going to talk to you about Dievas, that is the Lithuanian name of this particular god. And his Latvian name is Dives. So all the Latvian and Lithuanian speakers who watch this, I apologize if I am pronouncing these names wrong. I am a native Finnish speaker myself. However, I think I will use the Dievas title in this video because it's easier for me to pronounce. So, Dievas was the god of the skies in Baltic mythology and he was seen as the ruler of the skies. However, Dievas was not a thunder god. For that, body Toch has a different entity, but Dievas, he was the god of the skies. It is believed that the name Dievas and Dives, they are derived from proto in the European word Di, which means a god or heaven, but in the Baltic sense, Dievas was foremost a pagan god, and later on, when uh, Baltic countries, uh, people were trying to convert them to Christianity, that is when they used the god Dievas as counterpart for them, a parallel god for the Christian god, that's what they tried to do. But however, uh, Dievas is really a pagan god and even older than the in the European gods, his, his worship goes back to archaic times of the body clans. There isn't many description of how the Dievas looked like. Most of the time he's um, described to be a handsome man who dresses up in uh, silver silks and he has a shiny sword. Sometimes this sword is described to be green but most of the time it's just a shiny sword. And he's described to dress up as a Baltic um, duke of the pagan times. So, just uh, described as a wealthy Baltic man on how they used to dress up in the past. And he's sometimes also seen as an old man, or he can uh, transform himself into an old man. And this is something very common within many mythologies, at least in Northern Europe. Like Ukko in Finnish mythology, he could also shapeshift and Tapio in Finnish mythology. And many of the gods in Baltic mythology, they are also shapeshifters. Loki in Nordic mythology and so on. So it's very common. So Dievas, he could change himself into shape of an old man and he could visit from uh, town to town, village to village, and meet people and give gifts for those people who think they deserved uh, gifts from him. Dievas, he is not only a god of the skies and god of heaven, he was also seen as someone who controlled the fate, and he has parallel levels to the Baltic goddess Laima, who is the goddess of destiny, and she has like three counterparts of herself, Laima. This is very common with the three Norse and three <laughs> weavers throughout the Europe, this idea of three ladies who are in charge of destiny. But uh, in many occasions, Dievas is also connected to destiny and fate of the people. And some stories even tell that Laima, the goddess of fate, she is the daughter of Dievas. But is something that we don't know much about. This is one part where mythology overlaps with everything and of course if you think about different countries in different parts of the different lands they've been tell they've been telling different versions of basically the same story and this is how we get so many variations of 
every single tail in every single mythology and yes he was also seen as a god who in cosmological order is a creator god but he's not really that kind of um, beginner god alone there were several different beginner gods in Baltic mythology but when it comes to humans that is where um, Dievas is seen as beginner god he gave humans their cultural gifts or cultural gifts so Dievas is a god he's related to culture human culture and human relationships and protecting humans in this sense he's also the god of law god of order and stability and he is the one that people asked advice when it came to legal matters and such things. And it is believed that uh, Dia was because, well, he was depicted to be like Bardic Dew, basically in a spiritual form. People believed that within heavens he had a farmstead where he lived under a mountain or in the top of a mountain, a silver mountain. And he had a house there with different gardens and a birtis, which is like a Baltic name for a sauna, and uh, uh, servants and all kinds of things like that. So <laughs> he was really a duke who lived in the skies. And there was his farm was very rich and earthy farm. Same way as Baltic countries, uh, their land is quite rich and earthy. So I think that is reflection from that. And also, uh, Devas as the god of the heavens, he is also connected to the sun and the soul, like the sun goddess. And some, story, some stories tell that Sole and Devas were a couple, but this is where the mythology overlaps because Sole, she is the matriarchal goddess of the whole Baltic pantheon, she is connected to Bergunas, the god of thunder. Uh, Devas and also Menul is the god of the moon, so you don't really know what's going on there. But uh, Devas mythology it is also connected to the sun and bringing the sun uh, to the earth. He has a also a wagon or sometimes a slike, especially around winter time he arrives with a slike. And this is, uh, wagon is put by two magnificent dappled steeds and they are called Dievo Tsirkai. I hope I pronounced it right. And um, sometimes he also he's also put by two black dogs or black ravens and the whole idea of Wacken you can find that from <laughs> several different mythologies from Finnish, Nordic, um, Germanic, um, Gaelic <laughs> pretty much all over so that is very common Dievas is very much connected to solar circle and the sun and different solstices and especially uh, Dievas he was called during every pretty much every pagan Baltic festival but especially around summer the festivals that were related to summer that is when people did special rites for for Devas and these rituals emphasize human sexuality, animal insemination and beekeeping. So bees are holy animals connected to Devas as well with horses. Also is really the main animal of Devas, the holy animal sacred to Devas and people saw horses as gifts straight from the Evas. They were gifts from the God of Heaven. So when you hear these myths about the Evas, you can hear that there is many similarities to Christianity. There's the shape-shifting from young man to an old man and the fact that people really were very devoted to the Evas and that he was very loved God by Baltic people and well, he was the God of the skies and very important to humans that is when uh, Baltic countries when the invaders wanted to Christianize them Dievas became the god that was a presentation of the Christian god and in Prussian the Dievas is called Okopirmas which means the god who came first and well 
we didn't finish mythology I think parallel card for for Diabas would be Okko and then Diernes in um, Teotonic mythology and Thor you know but those are really more close to Perkunos but then I think Okko within Finnish mythology he is like a mixture of uh, Diabas and Perkunos he has elements of both of them but this is the way mythology overlaps throughout the world but anyway because Diabas was such beloved god by the Baltic people of the pagan times that is why the Diabas he became the Christian god when the Christian invaders came. Still today, Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia, they are probably the most atheistic countries in the world. And there's lots of pagan activity, so uh, apparently the Christianization didn't work out that well in those countries. So this was the story of Diabas. Thank you for watching guys. If you have if you are just as much passionate about mythologies as I am, feel free to subscribe to my channel and if you enjoyed this video please consider leaving big thumbs up for the God of the Heavens within Baltic Mythology. So thank you for watching guys. I will see you on my next videos. Take care and bye. Merry meet fairy souls, it is Nina and you are watching Fairy Chamber channel. I promised you videos from Baltic pagan holidays and this video is going to be about Belines, which is a Lithuanian version of Halloween or Samhain or Kekri or Day of the Dead. Belines, it lasted from the end of October to the beginning of November and it was the time to remember the Belles passed away people, the spirits of the dead. It's not just to remember your close relatives who had passed away, but in general all people who had passed away and the spirits of the dead and sisters were a really big part of celebrating the Veliness. All the Lithuanian viewers who watch this and if I pronounce these words wrong, I apologize. In pagan Lithuania there was this very strong belief that during Velines and during Kuchios, which was uh, Christmas or midwinter solstice, all the passed away relatives and the dead spirits of the dead would join the living to celebrate together. The ancestors and the spirits they were people's links to the past and to the idea of to the idea of rebirth in nature. Because of the virtue of the people was rather animistic and shamanic so the spirits they could live in the stones in the rocks in the trees in the air the invisible spirits they're always part of the living as well some of the traditions of Belines were fires or the hot fires and the hot fires they were lit because it was believed that the spirits of the dead were drawn to the fires and they would stay near the fires and then they would also stay near the living people at the same time, their descendants. It was also custom to throw food for the fire for the gods and different Lithuanian deities and as well for the ancestors because it was believed that the smoke would rise into the skies and into the invisible worlds for the deities and the spirits. And all time period of Velines, it was great big festival and people made lots of food and ate lots of food and drank lots of drinks and they were also taken to the cemetery some of the food and the drinks and the graves of the ancestors were decorated with reds and um, maybe even handcrafts. Grain and beer would also be poured into the fire and they would magically go to the spirit world and also grain and also drops of beer were uh, poured into the corner of the houses. It was believed that the ancestors or the spirits, in Finland we would call them tontu <laughs> or some kind of house spirits, uh, they lived usually in the corner of the house so that's why people poured ale and some grain to the corners of the house. All that was done during a ceremony so people would chant ceremonial songs during the ritual. After visiting the 
friends there was the family dinner and there was tradition for the head of the house to give a toast called causas uh, the head of the house would put some salt there some grains and some flour into the cup and then he would raise the cup and say for all our dear friends meaning not just the living people but also the passed away people causas was an offering cup sometimes it was a horn that would pass around to each person in the dinner table and they would all need to take a sip from it some of the traditions was to sing uh, harvest songs and was to sing songs that were part of the lineage and there was also tradition that is also very common in Finno-Ukrian cultures and in Estonia that is uh, in the dinner table people would leave empty seats for the some uh, ancestors who had passed away and who were really respected and they would put a plate for them and food for them and drinks for them so the ancestor did join the meal as well Obviously, when Velines was celebrated in the pagan times, there was no electric light, so people ate by the candlelight or they burned as small torches. There was something really interesting that I found from celebration of Velines. In Lithuania, there was a custom to make these small tables for the dead. So there were small tables put next to the graves and people take little foods or drinks and gifts to those tables so that the spirit of the ancestors might raise from the grave and have their own little party there in the cemetery. I think it is really a universal thing the way we as humans need to have a certain connection to the past and passed away relatives, passed away ancestors. I think all these uh, pagan holidays that take place in October, November uh, around Europe and around around the world in a way they all have the same hardcore people's need for people's need to understand dead really people's need to accept dead as part of the natural world and this is something that many other religions despite because there is faith that people so go somewhere else and not that it is a constant cycle and it is a natural part of life so many of these uh, October November festivals that were really about death and harvest not just death of people but death in nature celebrating the harvest and end of the harvest there's this idea that we as human beings we do not leave our families or friends after we pass away we always come back to those people who we care about and also that we are part of the nature so we don't really go anywhere from nature we just reborn again into the nature or part of us is reborn again to the nature and I think that is profoundly beautiful thank you so much for watching guys and if you want to hear more about Baltic pagan holidays just let me know and I will continue my research because I found them really interesting and be sure to share my videos about Finnish pagan holidays all of you who celebrate Belines very happy Belines I hope you have a lovely time wherever you are take care moi moi Heart of Mielik is a course that I created all the way back in 2015 and through the years it has introduced countless of people to the magical world of Finnish mythology. The course includes 8 modules, which all include video lessons and PDF sheets, each covering a different area. I am running a special sale, and now you can get this course just for 65 euros. It's normally 120. You don't want to miss this opportunity, and only the first 30 people get this course at this price. And I look forward connecting with you.